Welcome everybody. We're back in this code to break some hard dependencies. And as promised last time, we will be looking at these two lines where it fetches data from a remote JSON API. And this is a problem because it is a hard dependency on this API and creates a strong coupling and makes this whole method untestable. First of all, the test would be very slow because it has to wait for the responses all the time, or else it would be very unstable because if the server was down, the test wouldn't work. So how would we go about breaking this dependency? First of all, I would think of extracting this as a method, like this. And what I would also like to do is, I would rather extract a new collaborator for it. A new class called statistics that would encapsulate the fetching of this mean list. But right now I can't really do it or rather I do not want to do it because the problem I see is that this method now throws an IO exception. But the IO exception to me is an implementation detail. As a user of this statistics class, I am not interested whether it is going over the network or not. I'm not interested if it is calling a JSON API or reading a file or accessing a, some in-memory map. That's an implementation detail and it should not be part of the API. So before I would extract a collaborator for this method, I want to get rid of this IO exception. I would have to change the scope of the try catch block first. But this is very risky. This is not an automated refactoring, which would be safe, but rather a manual change to an untested code base, which is quite risky. So I would not do that. Instead, I would first put the code under test, then do the manual refactoring safely, and then extract the proper method that does not throw an IO exception. For testing, I will use a technique called subclass and override. So I would just override this method I just extracted. I could return any kind of double values. And I could even do something like record all the invocations that are done to this method and then verify it. For example, I could here create a list of loopers fetch mean list invocations and in here I could whenever this method is called add the values it has been or the arguments it has been invoked with and this means as a result I can assert that the invocations have been made Let me first separate these lines. This is the preparation range and here we are acting and here we are asserting. What else do we have to test? We do have to test whether the outliner is invoked correctly. So I would now as well do verifications on the outliner mock. And this should be green. Let me tell you this. Usually when I do my unit tests, I would rather have my unit test fail for only one reason so that when it fails, I know exactly what is not working. But for this case, for this unit test, it is not meant to stay. It is just meant to assist my refactoring. And because of that, I'm not really concerned that I have more than one assertions here, or more than one kind of assertions. Let's run this whole thing with coverage. So I am not yet testing the error case. How could I test that? I could use the same trick, subclass in override, for example. Extract this. 
in my test case override it. Therefore, I would just copy this whole test. And in this case, this would be different because it would throw a new AO exception with some reason. And in this case, it should never invoke any anything about the outline. I think there is even some verification that, that there is zero interactions with this mock. Let's check for that. Uh, no interactions with outliner. That's better. So I would override the log error method and capture all these arguments that have been passed here. So I will make a list of exception errors logged. I would use this here. Now I can use it here in the bottom for the assertions. I could even check whether the right errors were thrown. Therefore, I would have to initialize it somewhere here. And throw this here. And then I can do something like contains only expected error. Run the tests and run it with coverage. And now you can see that my error case is as well covered. But don't be fooled. Code coverage just means that the tests actually execute those lines. It does not mean that the tests are able to catch all faults. But for this, for me, the, the test coverage that I have right now gives me enough confidence for the refactoring that I would like to do. And the refactoring is to move this sketch block up here. Therefore, I need to initialize this variable here. And I can set it here. Let's format the code and see if the tests still work. Yes, the tests in the green. And as a result, when I now extract this, which is a much better seam than the one I had before. This does not throw the IO exception as it is catched within this method, in this seam. And I would be very happy now to extract this code as a new collaborator. But before that, I would inline this again. I don't need this method anymore. Or so I would inline the log error. I don't know why he's showing this, but I think this should work. Yes. I could now extract a delicate glass for this. This would be the statistics. This is unused. Now I want to make the statistics injectable. This is unused. So I will again move the initialization to the constructor and extract the parameter so that I can inject it. This was the subclass and override technique. I like to use it to get legacy code under test, especially when I need to refactor first to isolate proper seams. And in the next episode, I will show you how mutation testing can improve the quality of your tests and increase your confidence when doing refactorings. I'm Gregor, see you next time.